the 14th of May, 2022. 14th of May. So, thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel on the 14th of May, 2022. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel, like my official YouTube videos, and if you're going to leave a comment, make sure to have etiquette and respect. Go to my website, www.susanmelang.com. So, I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast on his, um, I think it's the official YouTube channel. It's a clip section where he's speaking with a scientist. I, I'm fairly certain from his accent, he's from overseas. And they're talking about the Mua Mua if I pronounce that correctly, the Muamua um, space orbiting, I don't know what better terminology. Uh, I'll provide the link in this per particular um, official YouTube channel video so that way you are capable to see what I am referring to for the direct link so that way you can listen to that particular podcast as well as look into Joe Rogan experience in those references, as well as that particular professor. So he had discussed how he had been associated with Harvard University. And while well, I was just born and raised in New Jersey and grew up going to <laughs> various areas in the tri-state area in the 1980s and 1990s, there have been quite a few experiences that I've had um, in, 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 in a brief way to explain, obviously. There's a, there's a few, one or two. <laughs> per journal blog of mine, I'm the ordering PSA. <laughs> On my website, www.susanmeeling.com. And so they discuss this particular, I, I believe it's called a mua mua, and they don't really know what it is or where it came from. I don't even know if they know what time that it was first discovered. So I was listening to, and watching the NASA broadcast interview before listening to the Joe Rogan experience. I've, I've already heard this particular podcast um, clip, though it seemed apropos to re-listen to it after this particular official YouTube um, regarding the Joe Rogan experience, because he had interviewed someone else that had brought up the NASA interview where the three astronauts from Apollo 11 had landed on the moon. And I looked at the video and there were several things that had caught my attention, which first and foremost, the first part of the interview, if you watch it, the background projection images do not actually show up on the video, which to me is weird mainly because of the fact that I had performed at Temple of Flesh before. And in one of the performances, as well as a couple other performances that I had been involved in, you could actually see the images from the projection screen. In the pictures from my performances, I don't know if there was any video footage taken of my performances. However, that would be something else to take into consideration in the DFW area, as well as San Antonio. For those particular references in 2010 for the Uniform Fetish Ball, 2010 in regards of the Halloween timeframe, referencing my two different belly dances, and then 2011 regarding Exotic Easter, but I don't remember Exotic Easter having a projection screen in comparison to the prior three performances that I give as an example. But you can see them. As far as what the projection screen has in the background, you can see the image of whatever is in the projection screen in the background in comparison to this particular 
interview with the three astronauts who landed on the moon in the NASA interview. Now, it said that it happened in the 1960s, which if you actually take a look at what the fashion was in the 1960s compared to the 1980s, if you take a look at the fashion and, and their business suits, so that's kind of a difficulty because of you'd have to know fabric for that time frame. The only way you would know fabric for that time frame is if you were in person, face to face in person with people that would have that as a commonality. So I was born and raised in New Jersey and in New Jersey, New York City, especially Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, mainly the amount of people who were constantly wearing business suits. It's not necessarily a fashion. It's the fabric to pay attention to. So when you take a look at the coloration, the light blue with the black and then the dark brown, those particular suit designs were in the 1980s, mainly the mid to late 1980s in comparison to the early 1980s, the, um, especially for business. And so that's the NASA aspects as far as government is concerned. So those particular suit types are extremely different than suits going to a wedding or suits going to a party or suits going to an event that is not a business event. So those particular suits in reference to that NASA video are not from the 1960s. They are not from the 1970s. They are barely from the 1980s. They are more likely to the late 1980s, early 1990s, which is an irony when you look at certain, um, for the, so in these videos, in this particular one that I had watched, again, I'll put the link for that particular reference in this official YouTube video of mine, so that way you can compare and see what I'm talking about. The, partic the particular type of fabric that is worn by those individuals is something of the early 1990s in comparison to the late 1980s because in the late 1980s they used more not corduroy but there were certain aspects of the fabric that was more similar to corduroy as to the way the texture physically was but also looked in comparison to the 1990s, where it was far more smooth. In the 1970s, regarding individuals who would wear business suits or suits in whatever capacity, from the 1970s in the 1980s, for those who would know the tri-state area, usually those particular suits were very flimsy. They, th this type of fabric, not that it would move this way, but it was similar, where a male who would wear a suit that would have this type of a fabric, you could tell in comparison to the suits in that particular video. So then when you take in consideration, there are little bleeps in between these videos where it brings up numerical factors, and it even has 1994 in there. So then the question is, does the time frame of that official broadcast have to do with the actual year that we in this year of 2022 actually would know as 1994 or would it be the consideration of where at the time frames whenever NASA and I brought this up in prior official YouTube videos of mine when the time frame that NASA was officially started is going to be considered different compared to the officializing of the paperwork. Similarly, you can take into consideration as to in the year of 2020, when at the time, President of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump, with Vice President of the United States of America, Mike Pence, and their administrations had worked with Congress and Senate and Pentagon at the time frame to officialize the paperwork in reference to the U.S. Space Force. Well, what is the length of time of actually beginning the U.S. Space Force? Would that be the year of 2020 for this lecture? The answer is no. The reality is that 
the U.S. Space Force would have had multitudes of time frames of decades of prior research. So whether that has to do with the UFO, UAP, whatever types of sightings, over the decades, which would be probably after the time frame of whenever what would be considered as the Big Blue Book or the Blue Book Project. Because how would the general public actually know what the time is? In reality, if you really take in consideration the possibilities in reference to NASA, let's say NASA was, and because there is the date format on these particular little blue screen blips, 1425. Well, what if 1425 was repeated over and over and over and over again until human beings were capable to progress with technology? What if in those references, the time frame is actually different because you have which area of the world and what time as to? How long did it take to actually calculate that? As far as the rotation of the Earth, not just in the orbit around the sun, just a 24 hour time frame. How long did it actually take to calculate that? Because you have to take in consideration the different seasons of the Earth. And when you take these calculations into consideration in conjunction to the Joe Rogan Experience official YouTube channel, with the individual, I do apologize, but I will put the link in so you will know who I'm referencing to in the section underneath my official YouTube video from Harvard. The factors of bringing up Galileo, which whatever year of, that's kind of going back to the carbon dating. Because what is considered the time? Do you consider time the linear time? Well, when does linear time actually begin? Because you have the time frame, pun intended, where you have clocks, watches, and so on and so forth in comparison to a calculated version of time. So how do you tell the difference? How do you distinguish the time frame? Literally, how do you distinguish it? Then you have something such as Y2K. Well, that was in the turn of the millennium. This was after certain astrological signs and so on and so forth. So what would that translate to in those comparisons? So if in the actualities of way back when, it was actually the 1400s when NASA was officially created. And what if that particular sign in regards of that particular YouTube video, again, I'll put the link in, that in those references, 1425 is the actual foundation date of the year that NASA had actually been. And whatever year that would be in the consideration to the time frame in reference to Apollo 11. Then you have the irony as to the 11th of September 2001, which then you have Apollo 11. And it's not the same, but if you get into spiritual numbers and calculations in those capacities, in a multitude of ways, you have to have a certain type of viewpoint regarding that. Those particular factors to take in consideration as to that particular video where you don't see any of the actual images, you don't see any of the video footage, yet they're doing an interview. Additionally, take into consideration there are females in the audience that are actually allowed to ask questions. Well, sure, there have been female journalists over the years, more recently. But when did they actually have being allowed on the television? And then when you take in consideration NASA. So while I'm sure they had plenty of females in NASA that assisted with certain factors. How in reference to journalists at a NASA presentation regarding Apollo 11 in the 1960s, 1970s, take a look at the female's hair. That's not female hair from the 1960s, 1970s. That's female hair from the 1980s, 1990s. In comparison, 
especially with the way some of the female's hair is feathered. And anybody who knows female hair, especially hairstylists, you know that that feathering began in the mid to late 1980s into the 1990s. That feathering was not done in the 1970s or 1960s or 1950s. It was a situation that was made later. So not only, and then, and then the females have shoulder pads in their blouses and their suits. That is a 1980s into 1990s fashion situation regarding business. For those who know that, then when you take in consideration again to the business suits of those three individuals, well, those males were not wearing flimsy suits. They were wearing thick suits. The fabric, I'm sure, was a type of a polymer blend. However, for the capacity for those particular suits to have that particular type of a sheen in the time frame of that type of video footage, well, you didn't have that type of a fabric earlier on. You had that type of a fabric in the late 1980s into the 1990s. And again, because of being a child in the 1980s and 1990s in the tri-state area, and then I have this, as a child, I had an issue with a certain type of fabric. It wasn't that it was an issue per se. I just, I would feel comfortable, it, not comfortable, and it's a bad choice of word. Um, it would calm me down. It was like the equivalent of those fidget or fit whatever things, but it was a fabric. And so I would rub this fabric between my fingers because of various situations I was dealing with or whatever in those references. That particular fabric, I am extremely particular on. My biological mother had tried in so many different ways to find something and she would try to claim that it was close enough and it wasn't because of the, it, there were so many different factors in specific to the way the fabric was. And so I don't know what company makes this particular fabric. I don't know where it comes from, but I know that when I find it, I am CDO about it. <laughs> I am, it's, and, and I've only, realistically, I've only shared it with my son and my daughter. As far as this particular fabric, it's, and both of them have had the same thing when it comes to the way I was as a child, where rubbing it between the fingers, it's just something of a calming situation to the nerves. And it's only a certain type of fabric. It's not just any type of fabric. It, my biological mother tried when it came to the edges of blankets. That was the normalcy, but it wasn't the same fabric. And th there was just, it, it, I know that the company for one particular toy was called I'm a Dundee. And so the, um, it, I think it's an Australian something or another, but there's something in that particular fabric that was just, that's the only way to put it. And so in reference to being capable to see on sight, from whenever that particular actual interview occurred, which I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually in the 1994 time frame, because of those particular types of fabric for those particular suits. So sure, they could have been at Cape Canaveral, they could have been in whatever capacity of, in the East Coast area, there's a specific type of fabric for these specific suits. Anybody who has attended college in the Northeast area, compared to whatever state you came from, you would be capable to know that there was a difference to the particular fabric. The fabric was thicker, also partially because of the weather, 
but it's also the way the fabric was constructed in reference to the stitching as well as the lining. Now, for those who don't have a particular viewpoint or don't have that particular eye regarding sight, what a lining does in the difference compared to the exterior portion of fabric. If you have that as a viewpoint regarding suits, you have to pay attention to those details in a very different capacity, which as a smidgen CDO as a child, <laughs> by a lot I was, yes, by a lot. So in the reference, my fabric for this, you can tell is very thin in comparison. This is a thin fabric. This is a little bit thicker because it's, it's wrapped in that reference compared to, well, you take a look at those suits and anybody who's worn suits in the 1990s knows they can look at that type of suit and be capable to notice the difference. Now it's no different than regarding my corsetry. I could tell the difference between a actual six to eight millimeter spiral steel boning that it should be when I pay for it because I don't pay for the weak boning of six mill. I don't like six millimeter boning because it's too weak. It's too thin. It's not good enough. I don't care if you add two pieces of six millimeter boning next to each other side by side. It's not good enough to the eight millimeter boning. I don't care what anybody wishes to try to claim. I pay for something specific. It is supposed to be exactly as I ordered in comparison. Same thing in reference to the 10 millimeter boning as far as the flat bones, because I know what works best for me. I know what's actually comfortable for me. So those types of individuals that would think it would be acceptable to substitute, here's the clarification, it's not. It's not okay to substitute at all. I'm not willing to deal with that because then I will be in a bad mood. I'm going to guesstimate that has been capable to be distinguished. And so those particular factors, when I order certain things and it is supposed to be what I order, that is what is supposed to be what I order in comparison. So, you know, sure, there's two six millimeter boning in comparison to the one eight millimeter boning. And while some people might think, well, maybe it'll build strength. No, no, no. A single structure is the most strong in comparison to weakening it regarding that. So it's a personal preference for multiple reasons. And so those types where it hasn't been any comfort in any capacity whatsoever for quite a few decades of my life, just for those clarifications, where I've actually worked to be capable to have actual comfort instead. It's not in the opposite day factor. It's actually for my own comfort in comparison. So it's not something I appreciate because I don't appreciate lack of comfort. I don't appreciate individuals doing testing in that regard because I didn't ask for it. It does not put me in a good mood at all in those references because I did not consent to that. That's another factor. And so those types of those people who think whatever they think that I didn't ask them what they thought. That's the other thing. When you go to purchase something online, you go to purchase exactly what it is as per the description. If, but that's if you purchase it. See, I haven't had anything purchased 
in those references. That's kind of a thing. And even still, there's differences. And so, when I go to purchase an object such as a corset, I purchase what I expect at the very minimum to be exactly as per described. Any difference to that is not acceptable. The reality of those types of problems regarding shipping fees because of the overseas situations does not change the fact that those factors are considered unacceptable. And that has been a problem in regards to certain countries, to the United States of America. That has been a situation where there have been too many countries that have taken advantage of that problem needlessly. I am half Chinese. I would know a few situations now, wouldn't I? My Bakung and my Baku were very upset by that type for those clarifications. So those particular factors, you know, um, in those situations, hypothetically. Then it gets into the facts regarding NASA and that situation. And actually getting situations correctly taken care of in comparison. So while the United States of America has dealt with a bunch of individuals from various countries that have tried to do the equivalent of those, well, the shipping costs, well, you know, that, that can be solved real quick. We don't have to do anything outside of the country. We don't have to do that. We can take care of producing in the United States of America and we don't have to import anything if we don't want to. That is a capacity. So while other countries can think otherwise, we in the United States of America don't actually have to purchase outside of the United States of America. If there were those who would actually work. However, then there's that problem regarding those television and movies and pop culture references regarding certain types of lazy individuals in comparison to those who actually work. And those types of individuals who complain when instead, because that's that problem in those references, People who complain that other people who work move faster, you don't pay attention to the larger aspects as to the world. You don't see how you complaining that somebody is actually working and advancing things is actually progress in a good way. People who complain in those factors literally hold back progress for the rest of the United States of America, in my opinion, especially when it comes to both space and the oceanic areas. So those types of needless problems, as far as how long that's been going on, has been a situation for far too long, by far. So there are these situations regarding this NASA video. And then there's this Muamua that's within orbit of the Earth. And then there's the formation of the US Space Force. You'd think at this point in time in the year of 2022, that there might be hypothetically so people who would get in gear the correct way in comparison 
to having temper tantrums about their feelings when it comes to words. You know, here, let me put this in perspective. There is a object that nobody really knows what it is floating around the orbit of the earth. For however many decades, people on earth around the globe have been sending objects of what's considered the best technology out to space, to other areas. Haven't taken care of every aspect on the earth or in the waters but sends the best technology out to space past this whatever it's called muamua, whatever that possibly could be, while having whatever other orbiting satellites in those capacities. I'm not the smartest crayon in the toolbox. I, I acknowledge that. However, I seem to have this capability and maybe I'm the only one who notices this. That could be considered problematic. So let me reiterate, there's a we on earth don't know what the doohickey mabob muamua is. No idea what it is, what's in there, what's around it. Nothing, don't have any idea. There is an irony, hypothetically, in reference to Irving of 2011, and maybe, I don't know. Nonetheless, Muamua, just floating around in the orbit of the Earth. Cool, cool, we've sent pieces of technology out into space, into whatever areas, to other planets to go take a look at stuff with the best technology <laughs> on earth. We go do that. Don't know what's out there. Don't know, don't, don't, do not have a clue. Just go do that. that. That seems like a good idea by whoever's idea that happened to be. And you know, that situation. So I'm gonna give a reference to this for people to think about. So I created my website, www.susanbeling.com, and I have been working on my Medal of Honor Art Project, okay? Now, while there's the modern day book that I authored and a few other situations that I brought up in my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanbeling.com, I personally have noticed a few things. If I am accurate, then I'm accurate. I'm sure that there are good intentioned individuals. I'm sure that there are those who could possibly actually care about me. I wouldn't know because I haven't had the actual confirmation regarding that, though there could be. However, each individual knows who they are. Each individual knows whatever their intentions and so on and so forth. Now think about this regarding each one of my Medal of Honor art project trips, okay? To whatever capacities of, mainly in the time frame of 2014 through 2019. I'll, I'll do that, okay? I'll, I'll condense it. So 2014 to 2019, or I'll make it easier, 2014 to 2020, okay? Six years. Each individual knows who they are. They know whether it was a good intention or whatever, okay? Knows whether or not it was out of genuine concern for me or whatever, okay? Now think, there is a thing called Mua Mua that is just <laughs> going around the orbit of the earth. Don't know where it came from just happens to be there. And then there's all those times that we on Earth have sent stuff out to space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With the best technology that we've got at those times. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, but not just think. <laughs> we've got the space station out there, kind of 
looking at the earth and stuff like that. Cool, cool. But then there's like the other areas. <laughs> I am not the smartest crayon in the toolbox. It seems, seems a little bit of a, so we don't even know how big the Milky Way galaxy is. Whew. Don't know the deepest part of the ocean. Don't know that. Don't know. So on Earth, <laughs> in the ocean. <laughs> and people made fun of me for going from college algebra with trigonometry and calculus to second grade math. Oh, okay. So let me go over this again. <laughs> These people with all their degrees. Hey, Austin, remember how you were like <laughs> smartest people in the universe? Okay. <laughs> and my biological sister be like, I have a degree. Okay, okay, okay. I do not have a degree. <laughs> I've had this viewpoint for a while though. Okay, so there's this ocean area and it's technically on Earth. It's technically also in the Earth because of hot springs. So it's kind of a dual situation. Okay, so we don't know. <laughs> and then there, and you can even use this as a viewpoint regarding out in space, okay? So there were these people who were like, let's go and put this boat right here. Because, you know, on land, if you do certain things like put a birdhouse, come on. <laughs> here you go. We don't know what, what could there be, but, you know, let's put this right here. You know, we'll just do that. So, okay, again, space. So here, we're gonna go send these <laughs> two Hikima bobs <laughs> and what you call it, out into space. Yes, gonna be the best technology ever. <laughs> Don't know what's out there, <laughs> but this is the best technology that's on Earth. Here, the possibility of we don't know what of we don't know what species and we don't know how and what their technology could be. I mean, there's only all these UFO and UAP sightings where, you know, don't know where they come from, except for it's somewhere out there. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> In some area. <laughs> and the earth is round. <laughs> so don't know which way. <laughs> No bubbles to follow because, you know, it's scuba diving reference. And so, you know, okay, so this round sphere <laughs> floating around. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't graduate basic training. That's okay. I, I'm fairly certain I don't think I needed to graduate basic training to figure this out because I knew this as a child. Okay, so we're sending out stuff into space, okay? I had, I had known people who were into space. You know, they went to space camps and stuff like that. And I, we had disagreements because I was like, the ocean. And she was like, no, space. And I was like, no, like the ocean has stuff to, and then no, space. And, and oh, oh, okay. And the ocean. <laughs> she had no idea that I had gone to the ocean as often I, as I had. And she was arguing space stuff. And it's like, but the ocean, there's the ocean. <laughs> Has there ever been anyone in the Coast Guard, Marine Corps, or Navy who saw something that came out of the ocean or went into the ocean? And I'm not talking about species of animals. I'm talking, about, so I've taken some video and some pictures. <laughs> I went to go handle things. So that way, you know, on land safe and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm about life like that, you know. 
But you know, it is what it is as far as civilian recreational scuba divers in comparison. <clears throat> You know, I'm not saying anybody in particular, though I do have instructors that you can refer to in those references. And so, you know, because what would there be as far as fellowship? That's concerned. So then when I was out in Washington State, I went on the ferry ride and I had taken a few videos and images of stuff and it's like, well, that seems something. So, you know, I, I, I acknowledge I did this because I didn't know what else to do. So I had an Amazon Kindle at the time and I was on the ferry boat ride. It was, it, it, I think it was the fire version. And so it was given to me as a gift. And so <clears throat> I had seen this doohickey mabob floating in the water. And because I know how to do certain things, it was as it was. So I had made it where it came close enough, but not too close because I know about rogue waves. And okay, got the video image as best as I could. And then, <laughs> scoochy booty sort of thing. And so then I went inside and I found someone in a uniform that I could be like, hey, here, you know, take a look at this and looked for the, the doohickey mabobs in the ceiling. <laughs> I believe they're called security cameras is the word. And so here, and then, so then a taller person came over and I was excited because I'm short. And so it's like, yeah, here. <laughs> because why would I think about on the doohickey mabob itself? Though that would have been as it was. So anyway, so that particular video, cause I didn't know what else to do. And I didn't want to cause panic. Kind of figured that would be a good thing to not cause panic on a ferry boat ride where there were however many people on that boat ride. <laughs> you know, I kind of figured that the Washington State Port Authority probably could appreciate that. <laughs> In comparison to having to deal with that, so you know, I did what I could to be cool. Made calm, <laughs> except for the fact of knowing there was a doohickey mabob that I took a video of that I didn't know what it was, and so it was as it was, and so went on with whatever, and I got as good of a look at it as I could, you know. I've had some other situations, ironically, in reference to, you know, Great Falls, Montana, as far as a picture I took of what I actually saw with my own eyes. I didn't actually need the photography to see that. I could see it with my own eyes. Similarly to when I was out in Arco, I could hear it and see it with my own eyes. And so, you know, been dealing with a few things for a while, just a few things. And so I got made fun of as a child, as a teenager and a biological adult because I grew up only watching G-rated movies until after I was 13 years old. And I got made fun of for only seeing certain movies and not really going to the movies or looking into that, even television. It's usually documentaries, news, or interviews that I find more interesting because of facts in comparison. Now, I know that I am not the only child who has ever made any attempts to sneak to see something. Well, I went to try, uh, and, and I know that other children and teenagers snuck in to see other movies and stuff like, I've heard about that, I wouldn't actually know, but that particular factor. So take in consideration the differences. Whatever other people snuck to go see, I went to go sneak to see Sailor Moon. That point in time of my childhood, I would sneak down the stairs as quietly as I could to not make a sound, not to 
annoy, not to annoy, wake up my biological sister, my biological father, or my biological mother. Going from the second story down to the first story, each and every night, Monday through Friday, to be capable to see Sailor Moon around 3.30 in the morning when it was only one episode at, th at that time frame before it became two episodes and then later went into other time zones. And I would turn the television that was in the corner closest to the bathroom downstairs, which I would then have to do extra stuff to make attempts to be as quiet as possible to watch and listen to Sailor Moon. Because that was intriguing to me. That was what I was willing to, so take in consideration the risk, okay? Especially if you know about my biological father, let's be honest on that, and my biological mother, I was willing to deal with the possibilities of the risks to go see Sailor Moon because something seemed apropos. So now there's the Mua Mua situation. Okay. <laughs> I don't do this flimsily. There's not some, and, and you can look at my pattern of behavior. I do not take things lightly. I can joke around, I can be sarcastic, but if I go to take care of something, it's not ever in a lighthearted way. It's extremely heavy when you really think about it. So when you take in consideration my scuba diving, I earned 26 scuba diving certifications. It meant nothing to me as far as any of the civilian recreational scuba divers who literally made fun of me the way children did in school, which my daughter and my son would know in reference to McCoy Elementary School because both international scuba and scuba toys are in Carrollton, Texas. For those references. And so where I took my scuba diving seriously because of the facts. Yeah, I didn't become an instructor because why would I bother? Who did I have to learn from in certain references? There were those who took it seriously, yes. But there's the larger overall as well to take into consideration. So then in regards of my work, scuba diving, there's only one person to speak with, and that's me. And yet I dealt with all of these people, sure, a short amount of time, which realistically from February into Jet, February 2009 into um, January of 2010 in a more direct way at actual areas of water. Each week and weekend dealing with that. So there's really only one person who would have the understanding, which was an individual that I had dated and been engaged to, and he had only seen in one reference to what I dealt with regarding scuba diving. Yes, there were two people that over time I had dated in the scuba diving community. Well, one was as he was, and he was a part of scuba tours. And that was after how I had saved a few lives in the Gulf of Mexico area, including his. Because, you know, when all of the other scuba divers were ahead by several yards, to put mildly, to why would they ever see what I did to handle the situations? Though, since that particular individual acknowledged to having moved my gear around needlessly, the irony of his ignorance having put everybody else at risk for that, because you don't move somebody's gear around. And that reference is common sense. While some people look at scuba diving as a recreation, there are others 
who have not ever looked at scuba diving as a recreation and realistically won't ever look at scuba diving as a recreation for myself because I know better. So while other people can be whatever as far as scuba diving, that's not my type of scuba diving. That's not the way I will ever view scuba diving. You only need to take a look at the fact that I earned 26 scuba diving certifications for the short amount of time that I did. So while other people didn't think I took it seriously, the facts are as the facts are. And so this individual that I had dated that was not a scuba diver that had only had one interaction in regards to seeing how the people were in the civilian recreational scuba diver section regarding Clear Springs Scuba Park, that was mild compared to what I dealt with each day of each week and weekend. The stuff that occurred from 2019, that's the same thing that I took a stand against before. Those needless problems of those types. They don't see how it's ignorant. They don't see how it's childish and yet they know it is. And those particular types of needless problems. So that individual in one situation saw the smallest aspect. So what he saw and dealt with would be the equivalent of in the classroom. That wouldn't even be at the actual lake or quarry or hot spring or ocean or gulf area because obviously that's those needless problems that I had explained. So then there's another individual that I dated later. And he and I had been in the same National Geographic open water class and a few others, but he himself was a willing participant in regards to those needless drama, childish garbage situations in comparison. So while some people have the viewpoint that, oh, well, Patty or now is a recreational, whatever. That's your choice to view it that way. There are those who do not view it that way because they aren't getting into it in that civilian capacity. They're not getting into it in that recreational lazy type. They even, I cannot be the only person who's explained this. So those types of individuals who have been in that capacity, that was in 2009. Then there's the year of 2019 as to what I dealt with when I showed up at Clear Springs. And that only reiterates exactly what I dealt with needlessly as an unattached female in that area. I don't like throwing the female card around because realistically, I don't like being that type of person. But as an unattached female, those males and females acted in those manners, made those choices in those references. So rewind to the year of 2009, when 44 was in office, and I made multiple attempts to actually get to the capacity to ensure that my gear was actually correctly taken care of, correctly looked at because I'm the only one who would actually know what to discuss. Because why would any other moron who wasn't involved with my actual scuba diving think that my gear would ever be anything remotely close? Because of the mass production in comparison to the actual work itself, or would it actually take a head injury? Because it's not rocket science, literally. So in 2008, I had explained my reason for not voting for 44. You could compare it to prophecy, you could compare it to sight, whatever it is. 
I flat out said, I was not voting for 44. I knew he was going to become president. I knew. I knew he was. I knew he was going to become president of the United States of America. I didn't think that he needed to be president of the United States of America because the commander in chief of the armed forces of the United States of America has to have certain backgrounds, has to have the capacity to understand, has to have the capacity to disseminate information in a clear, concise manner to actually make the best possible choices cannot distinguish, though can give distinguishing factors, but cannot distinguish between the importance of actual life. So can utilize different proverbial metaphors of whatever in various capacities, though has to be capable to eloquently, to whatever words of, be capable to explain, to defend those particular reasons why. And I did not believe that 44 was going to be capable to deal with individuals of the armed forces of the United States of America. It wouldn't matter if they were a part of the Pentagon. It wouldn't matter if they were part of the FBI. It wouldn't matter if they were a part of Homeland Security. If it wouldn't matter if they were a part of the CIA in any capacity of whatever type of, as to the federal law enforcement and or even local or state law enforcement, because I had the opinion and if accurate, that there would be words that would be said similar to the situations regarding the areas of in the years of 2008 through 2012 regarding words and temper tantrums and situations of. Because the commander in chief of the armed forces of the United States of America is supposed to be capable to look beyond that that can acknowledge it, but does not need it as a specific, unless giving a reference point. So in regards of how I knew he was going to become president of the United States of America, this is why personal opinion as to my belief that president of the United States of America should have a particular background. If they do not, then it falls to the Vice President of the United States of America. But if not, then it has a different situation altogether because you have to have that capacity. So in the references to my scuba diving at this point in time, okay, I haven't been scuba diving since 2009. That's not the point. The point is my scuba diving in the year of 2009. You have who was the Vice President of the United States of America back in the time frame of 2009, which is uh, Vice President 46, but President of the United States of America 46, Joe Biden, and his administration, which obviously includes the First Lady of the United States of America, which would be Jill Biden. So the closest capacity is that they have family who was in the military. Obviously, they have the capacity of certain situations to their own backgrounds, their own work, and so on and so forth. At the time frame, obviously, since before the election of 2020, though in the year of 2009, as to my particular scuba diving, where I did not care who was president of the United States of America, who was vice president of the United States of America, that didn't matter because what needed to be done in regards of the work was what needed to be done. I made the attempts, despite all of these other situations, to get my gear to the correct location with that same minimum standard despite certain things, as to the video footage when with using the Amazon Kindle Fire situation out in Washington State on the Washington Ferry in the San Juan Island area. The very minimum, well, online, here. Posted these pictures, if, 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 just come and speak with me, because I have at that point in time already asked several people that I personally knew in the area as to. I wasn't near Fort Sam Houston. I needed to make sure that if I brought my gear to Fort Sam Houston because I'd only know the specific location to take. 
which would be the Navy Marine Special Warfare Unit. I wouldn't know where to specifically take my gear in regards of any other military installation. That's just the facts. It's not rocket science, it's common sense. So we're sure later I learned that Carswell has a naval air station. Okay, I don't know anybody there. I technically officially don't know anybody necessarily at Fort Sam Houston, but I know the Navy Marine Special Warfare Unit. I had actually been involved with them in regards of when I was in medical holds unit back in the year of 2000. So that wouldn't be an issue, additionally because of ISR, the Institute of Surgical Research, and having worked there, not in the official capacity of, but certain aspects too. So there's that, my knowledge of, in comparison to Carswell. Not even having known about Carswell until 2019 or 2020. So where individuals who could have just spoken with me in truth could have done that, Whatever choices they made are whatever choices they made. This is the reason why, additionally, I was not going to vote for, and I didn't vote for 44, because I could easily see how many people would prefer to be like the popular kids in school. Oh, look, this is so-and-so. It's just like that, the popular children in high school or the popular children in middle school and those capacities in comparison to what actually needs to be done. Those types that think that status is who you can know in comparison to the status of accomplishments and possibly who you know, because there is a difference between your own individual accomplishments and knowing someone compared to just going and knowing someone for whatever time frame up. There's obviously that difference. So in the capacities of making attempts as best as I could because of the amount of situations, especially by the time frame of 2019, yes, I know that I registered with the Library of Congress. Yes, I know that I have put my books online. I know that I have my website, www.susanmealing.com. Yes, I know I have my journal blog. And yet at the same time, I also know that there are certain factors that are not up for just reading about that actually require discussions. That's the situation. So yes, I know that I can only tell the truth and I'll acknowledge that. I have. I'll acknowledge as I have that I can make mistakes. I have done that. I haven't ever. I have acknowledged that I can forget things. I haven't denied that ever. Especially after waking up from my coma after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. That is something I very much have known. So, I've made every attempt. So in 2009, I didn't care that 44 was in office and 46 was Vice President of the United States of America when I went out to the Atlantic. That meant nothing to me. No offense to 44 and 46, no offense to Congress, no offense to Senate, no offense to the Pentagon. I didn't really care who was in office. Didn't care who was elected. That wasn't important to me. What was important to me was handling the situation and making sure it was actually taken care of correctly. You know, so that way that wasn't a problem on land or in the land either. That's the other factor. So, you know, I just went to go take care of it because who was I going to speak with after however many years and decades by that point in time? I already had my childhood, I had my teenage years, I had my biological adult years, then I have a head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, I got Mike and Anna and Patricia being that way. Yeah, no, 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 no. Who am I gonna speak with about that? Because with those needless problems, then you add my ex-in-laws on top of that crap. 
Yeah, no, 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 no. Who am I going to speak with that can actually speak with me in truth in comparison to that garbage? Nobody is the answer for this lecture because I made attempts in a multitude of other ways and instead of anybody actually speaking with me in truth, there were all these needless games. So I made all these attempts and all these other situations to make severe attempts to actually get to individuals that I could actually speak with about in comparison to those types that want to be a part of something that, okay, maybe if you do certain things, but that doesn't change some factors. So in that Joe Rogan experience, official YouTube video with the guy from the Harvard, he had said that somebody had been inspired by his work to do research and had invited him to whatever he was talking about in regards of. That has not been a luxury that I have ever been at this point in time, realistically, because that would require the actualities of, obviously. And so, especially as to what I would consider important in comparison. Because, you know, if you were to only think of certain things of being important to me compared to what I actually view as important, well, then I'm going to guesstimate you're going to pick the wrong choice. I'm going to guesstimate you're going to pick what you would wish in comparison to what I actually would prefer instead. So, there's that. That's a problem with certain types of males and certain types of females regarding those situations in comparison. Because where am I the least comfortable? Well, maybe there's a few examples. Instead, you know, from 2015 through 2018, maybe, maybe there's a few examples that would be capable to show my lack of comfort at all, in every capacity, except for during time frames that weren't events. Hypothetically, maybe that could be seen somewhere that that would actually have been my preference as to my own comfort instead because of the comparisons. So, you know, it, it wouldn't take rocket science to figure that out, but maybe it does because of the actual comfort levels in comparison. However, if that actually had to be pointed out, keep that in mind as to how I've always known myself in comparison to what some people have thought. So then there's that in reference to any possibility regarding relationships, any type, whether it's an acquaintance or a friendship or family type, whatever, or especially in regards of the romantic type, take that into consideration to that larger capacity as to that's actually the prime example for relationship factors. Where was I at most ease in comparison to where was I on guard at all times because of situations that I was not comfortable with? As a hypothetical, but you know, whatever, as far as certain other factors, because, well, if anybody were to be in the thought process of, well, if you weren't comfortable, then just, well, I did. I left. See? You didn't even have to finish that in this lecture for that thought. I did, on my own, without any prompting either, just for that clarification. Nobody spoke with me, remember? I just left. Went to go take care of things. And so there were all these situations that needed to be clarified because where it once was comfortable at Sapphire, I actually was enjoying myself up until a certain point 
in 2016 when things just weren't comfortable anymore. And then as things went onward, as 2016 went into 2017, then there wasn't, there was less comfort. And then 2017 until 2018, the least amount of comfort. Why would that be? Did I go to the root source as to getting that clarified? As to the needless drama that should not have ever occurred in the area of Washington State and or my Medal of Honor art projects by going directly to the state of Texas? Did I get that correct? Did I go to the areas and make requests to speak with certain individuals as far as what's supposed to be considered as the adult lifestyle community as to the needless problems that were stirred up in Texas apparently because of your types in comparison because everything was fine up in Washington State. There were certain situations but there weren't such needless problems in the lifestyle. Who would have any involvement with those needless problems involving themselves where they weren't invited? Because sure, it's a business, sure, whatever, but those needless problems were not invited. So in the capacities of, I'll give this reference. When it comes to my house, especially, you take your damn shoes off at the door. You. You leave them there. Sure, in this capacity, I'm doing the official video and stuff like that. And as soon as I'm done, my shoes come off. There's that reference. You leave that crap outside is what that boils down to. So where I was volunteering at Sapphire and enjoying myself with who I did get to know, if it was in honesty, though, those particular situations of those types, what difference or lack thereof to the areas in the state of Texas. Would that have to do with my ex-in-laws and or my biological mother and or my biological father and or my biological sister involving themselves where they were not asked to be, specifically? And sure, it's an open whatever as far as, but you know, there are people who actually want to enjoy themselves and don't want to deal with that crap. I'm not the only one. So, you know, while some people think that that's a good thing, I'm letting you know it's not. It wasn't good back in the time frame of 2003 or since then. You didn't do anything that actually assisted because what should have been done should have been done in comparison to those needless problems. So if Mike, Anna, and Patricia had told the truth, in comparison to the garbage they had stirred up. The after effects from my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 wouldn't have been as bad, most likely, if they hadn't done what they had. Same thing with those drama type of high schoolers that I didn't ask for their assistance. You know, and they, again, they weren't invited onto my property by me. I'm the only one who would have had the legal authority to invite them and give them the RSVP situations that would be mandatory. Not a free willy nilly sort of thing the way that certain types are. Yeah, no, born and raised in New Jersey. You have a set time frame. Better, you know, maximize the time. Otherwise, if you're going to overstep your boundaries, don't be surprised as to the words that come out. You know, certain types that choose to involve themselves and stir up needless drama, making promises that they don't have the right to make promises for. That's the other thing. Don't make promises in regards of my work when it comes to you're not at liberty to do so. That's not your job. I go to take care of what I go to take care of. And so there's also that because those types, again, 
It's only been since February 2022 since the first time I've seen the New York City evening skyline since 1998. So you know that common sense factor to remember. Among all the other situations, because going in reference to the Tyrus comment on Greg Gutfeld's show, just because I've already dealt with certain things, just because I've handled a lot, just because, or in his wording, just because the big guy doesn't translate to you going and being that way and stirring up needless drama because you feel that your feelings matter because you want clout in comparison to paying attention because each time that those types of people have gone after bigger guys, such as at bars, for the example, you actually cause needless problems too if there's ever an issue. Because when you stir up needless drama, being a smaller individual in that Napoleon complex thing, you stir up problems needlessly and that individual may be the one individual you actually need to save you at a point in time. Because what do you know about Muamua or anything like that? What do you know about the space aspects? What do you know about the oceanic factors? Only what you know you can find in comparison? That seems pretty ignorant to go and stir up needless drama that way. That, that seems like it's problematic regarding that, which I'm gonna guesstimate dot, dot, dot guys could really understand. Because you know, those types of individuals, as far as those situations, because that doesn't make you stronger than you already are. If you think so, you waste needless energy on stupid, ignorant, childish situations that are absolutely worthless. You know, those types. Because how dare a female ever bring up looking at the infantry or cavalry or combat arms or MPs? What non-differences between those factors and the civilian recreational scuba diver sector as far as certain situations I dealt with? because of those types of sexist machismo males that have needed to accept that there are certain females that actually do have the capacity to, but in that similarity, you know, you do have a mom that gave birth to you. Whether or not you get along with her, you still have that reality. You should be more respectful towards females, period and end of story. And not all females actually look to lower the standards. There are some females who look to actually maintain and sustain those standards in comparison. But when those sexist machismo types go after females and stir up needless drama, then guess who is actually responsible for those lowered standards? It's not the females. It's the males who are sexist machismo individuals. You are the actual root point as far as the standards regarding females and military and law enforcement situations. Those types of sexist males that purposefully do that sort of needless garbage and stir up a bunch of needless drama are no different. They have no right to complain about any standards that have been lowered because all they need to do is go look in the bathroom mirror and look into the eyes of who actually was a part of that. Just for that clarification as well. Because you know, those types of males who think they know better just because of whatever their background was or is compared to. And you know, so there's a large population who were born in New Jersey. That doesn't mean we're the same at all, especially if you weren't born and raised in the area I was. 
well, I may have gone around whatever areas in New Jersey. If you didn't, let's say you didn't really go around the areas in New Jersey as often as I did, you don't have that level, even if you are a male, especially if you're a male when you actually think about it in the 1980s and 1990s in New Jersey and then New York City and then Pittsburgh and then Philadelphia. I mean, how much more sexist and machismo those types. Please, the 1980s versions of males from New Jersey? Yeah, no. Yeah, those individuals. How dare a female actually think for herself? How dare a female actually look at employment for herself and not in one particular capacity? But how dare a female actually have the capability of thinking for themselves? Because, you know, the 1980s types of certain males in the New Jersey area, they are quite comparable to individuals in the South as far as those types of males, in my opinion. Personal experience though. And so, you know, going back to that NASA interview with those three males in reference to the Apollo 11 landing. So there was the background pictures of the projection screen, which you can't see but you should be capable to. If I'm the first person to make an official YouTube video or recording or whatever about that, that lets you know the level of detail-oriented aspects as to a difference. Then, additionally, if I'm the first person to notice the actual situations, because not only are there the white screen and the white and gray screens in reference to certain factors, then there's an additional set of situations of questions. Third, when you take into consideration the code, which is not typical coding, but actual other sequence coding, as far as 1425 North or whatever in those capacities, 1994 in reference to Apollo 11, but claiming what in the 1960s, or is it the reference to what was said in the 1960s? Then the technology situations in NASA and Space Force formation, because if the technology across the world was not until the time frame starting of the year of 2000, then guess what? the time frame before might have been where it was repeated because why would anybody know? What year was the first calendar actually printed? What year? Not handwritten down, not for only in the governmental sectors or business sectors, in the general public, when was it first available to purchase calendars? The general public, going to a bookstore, going to a grocery store, when was the first year officially that you could purchase a calendar for that year? You could purchase a farmer's almanac. That's different than a calendar. Because of the seasonal changes per area. So then when is the time frame of the first official farmer's almanac? Though similarly, in reference to the formation of NASA, what's the actual start date? In comparison, getting a little deep in this lecture. Now, how long has that mua mua been around? When was it officially first found?
And has there ever been any attempts to go up to the Muamua? I mean, you know, that's something I haven't done. I'll acknowledge that. I'll go. <laughs> Let me know what I need to do. I, I mean, you know, because I am that type of person. I already landed at the bottom of the ocean and surfaced alive. I'll go. You know, I'll figure it out. You know, I could take pictures. I've done that before. <laughs> I mean, just think then at the same time, oh, you can't go there, ex-in-laws. You can't be there, biological. <laughs> this is how far I'm willing to go. <laughs> Those who have met them, they know. <laughs> Don't pretend, I know. And so... <laughs> Because apparently the bottom of the ocean wasn't enough of a sign regarding certain individuals at the time. I'm just saying. <laughs> Such as my ex-in-laws, or my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister most specifically. Yeah, apparently that wasn't enough of a memo of like, okay, this is my boundary. This is the distance that you must stay away. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know, because those who have shared a room, <laughs> you know that line that gets drawn and stuff like that. Yeah, here, here, here. Here's the length of the distance that you are ordered to stay away. <laughs> you are not allowed to do, and I don't care. This is how far, this is the minimum number. I don't care what the atmospheric measurement translation from... <laughs> This is not that. <laughs> and people told me that they thought it was just a sim sibling rivalry. No, no, no. <laughs> a sibling rivalry you can work through. I literally went to the. This is how far you have to stay away. This is my. This is my cue. <laughs> Which, of course, then those who have shared a room with more than one sibling, you know, like, you know, brothers and sisters that have had more than, oh, yeah, well, you have that quarter of that, and you have that quarter, <laughs> would very much easily be capable to understand that. Yeah, and just remember, as far as those who have multiple, they showed up in Texas. I just, you just, just, you just, you understand that. They showed up. I did, I, ah, ah, so there, that, that's, <laughs> those who have multiple siblings understand that, <laughs> especially if they ever had to share a room. That's, that's that, so. <laughs> I don't care how childish, it doesn't matter. So anyway, <laughs> I can double that when it comes to Irving, 2011. <laughs> <Just> saying. <laughs> I don't get. <laughs> I don't get. <laughs> Respect. You do that. I don't get. <laughs> in comparison, which was actually funny because for clarification, back in New Jersey, when my biological sister had actually wanted to do that, she had want, she was the one who wanted to draw the line. And I said, I don't think you should do that. And her response was, she knew everything. Okay. Okay. Now, mind you, there is only one entrance and one exit, and it's in the same spot. <laughs> Her side of the room was not near that at all. So <laughs> she drew the line from one side of the room to the other side. Obviously, it was uneven because what would she know about arithmetic? But aside from that, <laughs> when you look at the larger picture, well, <laughs> the, 
the only entrance and exit to the room was on my side of the room. <laughs> so she painted herself into a corner as far as that line was concerned. And so <laughs> she was so proud too. Was, I think she was, I think it was when she was in first or second grade. Okay. So I was in fifth or I was in sixth grade by that point in time, actually. So she was in second grade. So she drew this line and she's so proud of herself. Look what I did. Look what I did. Look. And I, and I just stood there on my side of the room. looking at her and she was so excited. She picked up her little porcelain dolls and gave them some hugs and so proud of herself. And so I asked her if she really wanted to have the line that way. And she said, absolutely. I won't ever, ever, ever reconsider nothing. Are you sure? <laughs> because if you want to keep it that way, we can. I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm willing to discuss things. But if you ever step over that line, I have the right to do whatever I want. And her response was, yeah, you do. You have the right to do whatever you want on your side of the line. That was her actual response. <laughs> standing for those who know which would only be a few so I was standing near the phone which was near the desk which was on my side of the room which was near the jewelry stuff but also the stairs to leave <laughs> go wherever I wanted <laughs> make whatever phone calls utilize whatever however and all that stuff mm-hmm so I re-ask my biological sister and I'm like, are you sure? Cause look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. And she's like, yeah, you just go do whatever you want. Cause yeah. <laughs> she grabs her little porcelain dolls. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, me and whatever her porcelain dolls, whatever. <laughs> I think that the line should be reviewed. And so, she refused. She absolutely refused. So as long as it's on my side, I can do whatever I want. I just want to clarify. Her response was, yeah, as long as it's on your side, whatever, whatever. <laughs> so proud of this. So let me go over and Major General Gilman can understand this. So I, at that time, the wall was actually over here, but I'm gonna lean on this. And I look at her and I say, you know, you have one window on your side of the room. And her response was, yeah, I do. Okay. It's a long drop, that gravity's a bitch. <laughs> uh, that's a starting point. Um, <clears throat> if you wanna go anywhere. <laughs> And her response was, I'll do it at one. And done. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so you have a bed that you're sharing with how many porcelain dolls? And she had some ungodly horrific number, something like, so you know how I have my corsets for those who have known, and most specifically in regards to the online aspects that would know. Um, <laughs> My biological sister probably had that many porcelain dolls when I was a child, when she was a child, because everybody knew that she liked those porcelain dolls. Please don't pretend that wasn't a nightmare, sleeping in the same room with that many porcelain dolls. I think in her bed alone, there was something like 50 or 60, maybe 70 porcelain dolls because of the way she had them arranged. And then like there were the porcelain dolls that were on the, the floor. and porcelain dolls along the sides and the sh shelves and walls and just ugh, just ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus the, plus the watches and clocks in the room next door. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, in my defense, I think I'm fairly well adjusted despite those, 
combined circumstances of growing up with someone who enjoys that number of porcelain dolls while having that many clocks and watches and you know t -t 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 all of that yeah 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 uh, grandfather clocks grandmother clocks the walls that go the, the clocks with the wall stuff and the little doohickey mabobs and yeah yeah I, you know I, I mean i acknowledge my biasness however in my defense with that many porcelain dolls and that i'm just saying i think that you know <laughs> It's a very different uh, viewpoint, but nonetheless, so I ask her, you know, are you, you know, do, do you see what's on your side of the room? And she went on and on, and I'm like, okay, so you've got the bookshelf over there as far as those books, but no other new books. And she said, yes, and I was like, okay. And you have the record player, and so that's all the music that you get to have, whereas I have the boom box on my side. And yeah, and you, you have that, you know, okay. So you don't get anything new. You do know that. Like you don't, you don't get anything past that. You're not allowed, ever. If you choose to not uh, review that, you're going to mistake it because you don't have that right anyway. Those aren't your books to begin with, they're mine because they were my books. And, uh, and so what she did was she picked up the books that were mine and threw them onto my side of the room. So I made my own bookshelf and stuff like that. She had like a book, I think she had maybe one or two books total. And it's like, okay, so here's my bookshelf along whatever, as far as the armoire and whatever. Okay, fine. And my clothes were already in my side of the room, so it wasn't as though there was anything in that reference. And so, same thing with what little I had at the time to begin with. And so I ask, are you, do you really want to keep that that way? Do you prefer that? Or do you, and you just do whatever you want to do. Okay, Patricia. All right, remember, you're not allowed to cross that line. Because anytime you cross that line or you do anything with your little porcelain dolls that crosses that line, I have every right to do whatever I choose to do, no matter what. And Patricia, my biological sister, yeah, you do whatever. If I choose to go and send my porcelain doll, send my porcelain doll. Okay, and if I handle that porcelain doll, I handle that porcelain doll. And so the irony, she picked up one of her porcelain dolls, she threw it, I caught it, and I <laughs> what was left then shattered along the wall after I threw it back at her. And <laughs> Patricia started crying. She's very sad. Do you want to re <laughs> evaluate this line? And so she started, you know, you do whatever you want to do. I'll do this. So she threw another porcelain doll, <laughs> threw him back, shatters on the wall. You're so big in my porcelain dolls. Remember, you literally agreed to the fact that if you send any of your porcelain dolls over the line, you agree that I have the right to do whatever I want to do. So, <laughs> you know, don't be sending any porcelain dolls that way. And, you know, otherwise you have to ask and, and do so my way. And so her response was, yeah, that's fine. I'll do it that way. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to go downstairs. And Patricia was like, we're, we we'll, well, we were in the, no, 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 I'm going to go downstairs. And she looks at the line I was drawn. And she goes, uh, and I'm like, just remember, <laughs> any time, remember that. Just remember, any time, <laughs> at any point in time, ever. <laughs> you do that. See, this is not a sibling rivalry. <laughs> I warned people, not a sibling rivalry. No. <laughs> Nope, no, not a sibling rivalry at all. You could either be on the correct side 
or you could be on the right side of the room. So you can take that reference to what my biological said, right, my biological father said it. Okay? And so that's your choice. That is, that's your choice. So there's, <laughs> so she wouldn't have any knowledge as to the fabrics unless she were to go look at that stuff. And even then, it, it's being capable to describe far more than just that because it has to do with far more. But those who actually paid attention and knew that time frame, you wouldn't be capable to work in Hollywood to have that knowledge. Because while you could be in the costume design, that's not the same, and you know it. It's different fabrics, completely, from Hollywood compared to the armed forces of the United States of America. Extremely different fabrics can work together in certain references, but when it comes to certain things, those are the realities. So then there's the lining in reference to those three males regarding the Apollo 11 situation and then the footage in the background. And so regarding my scuba diving, which scuba diving obviously has stuff to do with space not just swimming in the ocean, not just swimming to the buoys and back as a child back in the day. I mean, I went down to the Gulf of Mexico in 2019 and 2020, and I walked to the other side of where the Lexington was, uh, whatever. I mean, my, my feet were still on the ground when I was walking out there. So just for that clarification. And so I did do an official YouTube video or live Facebook or whatever, as far as that's concerned. I was walking, I wasn't swimming. And so that is as it is. And so when you take in consideration the facts of the additional situations to 2020 in December, and then 2021 regarding and all in the Atlantic areas of the ocean for these references. I didn't care who was in office. I cared about safety, security, and life. That's what I cared about. Still do just pointing that out there, but that's the difference between those who do recreational stuff in comparison to who doesn't. I haven't ever had that luxury to just have recreation. There's not ever been a point in time in my life where I've actually had that luxury, ever. The few times where I may have had some time it was only in certain types of certain relationships. That is so true, that is so true. <laughs> that is so true. Which that's the truth. It's what I dealt with. There hasn't been a childhood for me. I didn't have that luxury. I didn't have a teenager year type situation because I didn't have that luxury. As a biological adult, I didn't have that luxury because of what I was dealing with. So there's not a point in time where I've ever gotten to relax. And while in certain situations, if you want to consider, but what is the difference to what I would consider as compared to other people involving themselves where they weren't asked to. Because what somebody else would find as relaxation probably wouldn't be the same as mine. Especially if you go to refer to my biological sister, biological father, biological mother, and or ex-in-laws. You wouldn't know anything as to what I would actually prefer. Additionally though, that goes to my finances that I've worked towards to be capable to actually have relaxation the way I'd actually prefer instead.
because of those facts. But those sexist feminazi types, because that's what that is, I've already accomplished as much work as I have. I'm going on 40 years old. Realistically, at this point, it's beyond. There are people in the armed forces of the United States of America, you get 30 days of, of vacation time. I haven't had 30 days at all in any year to ever consider as. So not just since the time frame of 2000, obviously. So keep that in mind. So when you add the reference point of 2011, Irving, well, just because I handled situations on top of handling situations in the oceanic waters, you'd think that people who would have common sense wouldn't ever want to waste that. They'd actually want to do things where it would actually be more comfortable in comparison to what I've dealt with. But that requires genuine honesty in truth in comparison to what has occurred. So in regards of those situations, well, after everything that I've worked on and brought forward, what worth is there to that for me? Because while it's really cool that the guy that Joe Rogan Experience Show had brought up that someone who had been a student or something of his that had been inspired by his work had invited him to whatever in comparison to my Medal of Honor Art Project trips. Uh, nonetheless, um, those aspects regarding my scuba diving. Because how disrespectful to the oceanic waters would you be to anything that came from my work, scuba diving? Because if you would think that only name dropping would be a good idea, and I've already clarified other factors, then what would that situation be? in those references. Because obviously that wouldn't be showing any respect to my work or any recognition in reference to my work in the correct capacities to this point in time. Because there are those who know my opinion of name dropping. So I've brought up that my work in person, face to face in person regarding my scuba diving is only done one way, obviously. It's not in a name dropping way. Even this isn't in that capacity because I didn't have the direct capacities of. So anybody who went to speak with anybody that would not be me in regards of my son and or my daughter and or anybody that I knew in scuba diving, why would you ever think that that would be considered as respect to my work? That would be the opposite of in every capacity. because of the reality. So that's why you don't do surprises to certain people. You actually ask them. You actually get that capacity in comparison to assuming 
So if you assume that going through anybody except for me is a good idea, and it's already been clarified that it's not, I don't know how difficult that actually is to figure that out. So all of these years as to my work, and unlike those guys, that recognition, that's kind of the facts, not kind of, it is. So if you voted for 44, and then you voted for 45, but you're part of the silent majority, well, remember, you cost 45 the re-election because of your lack of honesty, lack of integrity, and lack of morals. Because it was already brought forward regarding several situations. So when in the time frame of November 2020 and those situations about the software were brought forward, as far as election integrity, that's something for you to take in consideration as well to this length of time. So 46, who obviously would have the clarifications from the time frame of 2009 to this point in time. And then the Vice President of the United States of America, Kamala Harris, number 48, She's from California, which translates to PADI, which translates to having seen a boat above the water surface level. So, you know, um, But I took care of what I took care of, and it didn't matter what political affiliation of, which I've brought forward before. So then you take in consideration my Medal of Honor art project. As far as the spirit of the Medal of Honor, because historical and spiritual rubbing, because there's those types who wouldn't know any better, because, you know, what would you ever do to ask? Because that would require asking. But those types of people, those assumptions, as far as a few things, hypothetically. Anyway, those particular situations of the symbol of the Medal of Honor Award, as far as that's concerned, I mean, you know, what would you notice in regards to all of the medals? common sense though. Anyway, so situations in those particular references as to any connection aspects, well, in the NASA situation as to the females in the audience, well, obviously they're much older in comparison too. And they have, um, you know, in comparison to the time frame, as to the clothing and the backgrounds, as to the types of chairs, in comparison to the time frame. But you'd have to know what those would actually be. That is an so people who have the capacity of looking at certain things, it's because they've had in-person, face-to-face, in-person experiences for some. There are those who unfortunately have gotten so lost in that pop culture reference that they don't know anything other than their pop culture references in comparison to in-person, face-to-face, in-person, depending on the individuals, depending on the situations. And so there has been that problem, needlessly, regarding certain types. And so only someone who would recognize those details 
would be capable to point that out. It's important. Additionally, in reference to that interview process with the clothing fabric types, as to the differences, those situations um, in the conjunction to the muamua, whatever it's called, um, that's something to think about, especially with the outward aspects as to space, the orbiting, common sense, especially with, you know it's called Wi-Fi, you know you have cell phone technology which doesn't have the cord that goes to the wall. At what point in time do people think about those transmissions in a more clear and concise aspect? It's to the importance of that, so, anyway, thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel and like my official YouTube videos. Share the link to my official YouTube videos. If you're going to comment, please utilize etiquette and respect. And when I say etiquette and respect, that translates to in my standards of what etiquette and respect are. And so not by what other people consider as etiquette and respect because those varying degrees, what I consider as etiquette and respect is obviously a smidgen different than certain other types. And so when I have said and when I have written as to etiquette and respect, well, there are those factors that I have my standards for etiquette and respect. So, protocol, who knows anybody who's ever had any military aspects that had protocol standards. Anybody at all, I didn't graduate basic training, though I'm fairly certain I didn't need to graduate basic training to know that there are protocol standards, which is an irony regarding the brigade commander and having to learn that. So make sure to go to my website as well, www.susanmeeling.com. And today is the 14th of May, 2022. Have a good day. You know, isn't it irony about time? and calendars.